A few months ago, I released a video that talked about the targeting options for Outbrain, and you can check that one right here. So if you found out that those targeting options were helpful and you want to launch a campaign, that should take you to the next step, getting the Outbrain pixel on your website. And even before you launch a campaign, you want to make sure that you have conversion tracking set up. That's exactly what I'm going to talk about today. We'll go over the ways that you can find the pixel within your Outbrain account how you can install it using Google Tag Manager, and then we'll cover the two types of conversions that you can set up for your Outbrain account. I'm in the Outbrain account that we created to make the targeting options video I talked about in the intro. So as I'm going through the setup of the pixel and certain conversion events, there's a few things that I already have created, but I will walk through the steps again just so we understand how to do it. There are certain things that I can't delete and recreate, but you'll still get an understanding of what to do. Before we create and launch a campaign, we want to make sure first that the pixel is on the site. So to find that, we need to go to Audiences. And Outbrain's menu and navigation is a little weird. Everything's all symbols and icons on the left-hand side, but you can see I'm hovering over Audiences, a little circle with two little people in it. So let's go in there. Like I said, some of the stuff is done already in the account. We do already have the pixel set up, but once you're in Audiences, you can see that there's the Outbrain pixel button. So if you click on that one, Here's where you will get the pixel and pixel instructions. Ideally, you would have this on every single page of your site, especially when we get into the URL based conversion setup, it's easy to have every page covered. I'm going to leave this window open because we're going to need some of the information here, mostly the part I have blurred out on the screen right now, but now I'm going to hop into Google Tag Manager. To begin setting up the Outbrain pixel, you can see I'm already in the tag section. You can click on new to create a new tag. You would have to name it. I'm not going to save this one because I already have an Outbrain pixel created in this Tag Manager account. But go to Tag Configuration. Let's click on this one. And you will not find a default Outbrain tag template if you're scrolling down in this menu. Now, if I scroll down, we're going to see recent options because I have used it before. So this is the one that we're actually going to want, the Outbrain pixel. But as you can see, it says Gallery. So if this is the first time you're setting this up, you will want to go to the magnifying glass to start searching for this particular tag type. I'm just going to type in Outbrain, and I will use the one actually from Outbrain that says Outbrain Pixel. Now there are a few permissions, and I'll admit, I have no idea what this stuff means, so usually I ignore this, as well as some advanced settings. This is if you want to set a particular firing priority or tag sequencing, something I typically don't do either. So that leaves us with the main part, your marketer ID. So let's hop back into Outbrain, and then what you would need to do is copy the part that I have blurred out. If I hover over, it's telling me to copy the code to clipboard. So it's easy if I do this, I can just open up a notepad. Yeah, I pasted it into the notepad. So we see like the Outbrain advanced ID part. Here's this long piece of code. I will copy, head back to Google Tag Manager, and then paste the ID right in this field. Next, we'll want to add the trigger. And I will want this to fire on all pages. From there, I would click Save. Sure, let's name it that. And then I would submit so I could publish the tag and it's live. I'm not going to do that because if we see down below, I already have an Outbrain pixel set up. So again, let's jump back into Outbrain. And then depending on how much traffic your site gets, from there, I would go and add an audience, create a segment, build a specific retargeting audience like I have here. We talk a lot more about this in the targeting video, so go check that one out. I'm not going to go into it a lot. And then once you start seeing your segment size increase, then you know that you have the pixel on the site and it's working. Another option you can do, and it tells you right above, is to download the Pixel Chrome plugin. This is just another way to confirm if the Outbrain Pixel is working on your website. So let me add it to Chrome. And I know you can't see my Pixel extensions because it lives right above the website. Don't typically record the URL portion of my screen for these videos, but you will see the little orange Outbrain face or logo. So if you click on the extension, there's the Pixel Tracker. It's saying it's found on this website. If I expand the page view option, the thing I have blurred out is the marketer ID. That's what we put into Google Tag Manager. So then you can hop around on specific pages. Let me go to a different one, click on the extension again. It's still found. It's still the same marketer ID. So I feel very comfortable that the pixel is working. After the pixel is on the website, another important part before launching a campaign is making sure your conversion tracking is set up. In order to do that, we need to go to this little funnel icon right above the audiences section where we're at. Let's click on this. And here's where you get an optional guide on how to set up the conversions. There's really two main ways to do this. You can go through all the steps here, which actually is fairly helpful to show you how to install the pixel again. So that's another option, a way to find it. And they kind of go through ways that you can create and test the conversion. I'm going to skip this for now. You can do it if you want. And then let's look at adding a conversion. Once again, here's another way that you can view the pixel if you still need to install it on your site. 
But if we go down to type, we see that there are two ways that we can set up conversions within the account. The easiest way is a URL based conversion, sending people to a specific thank you page or confirmation page. They fill out a form, the form submits, they get a thank you page. They buy something on your website, you send them to a purchase confirmation page. Pretty straightforward. So you can go up and grab one of those URLs and paste it in. Notice that the only option is URL contains. So if you need to track any specific goals separately and make sure that you do have unique URLs that you can differentiate what each of those actions are. Then we can go down and choose a category. In this case, we'll just say lead. You can pick whichever one makes sense for you. Name your conversion, whatever you want. Select your click conversion window. I purposely chose a large enough number just so you can see what the conversion windows are. It's got to be between 1 and 60 days, so I'm going to just max it out. Since this is a form fill and not an actual purchase, you can decide if you want to add a specific value towards it. That'll depend on how much a potential lead is worth to you. I do not know how to set up dynamic values for anything e-commerce related. If you do, it says right here, you can visit the Help Center and get more information on how to do that. It's automatically going to be included in total conversions. That's the whole point of conversion tracking. But one cool thing is that you can automatically create an audience segment from this specific conversion action. And if you look at see it's going to build from the past 30 days. This can help you automatically create your exclusion audiences. So if people do perform this specific action and you don't want to market to them anymore because they've already purchased something or if they've already submitted and given their information, exclude those people out. So you're not annoying them over and over with an ad. And now I can save it. And there we see there's one of the conversion actions. The URL based one will be the easiest to set up, but you already noticed that there was a second conversion type. So let's go and create a new one. And that is going to be event based conversions. Maybe you don't have an actual confirmation page An event fires when your form submits, or you want to track specific downloads, certain button clicks, or as I'm going to set up video views, because we do have a lot of embedded videos on our site. So we already have the event based conversion type selected. Dropping down to category, still going to choose the one that makes the most sense. I just updated the name because this is another option that we already have created. Keeping the window the same, going to skip the value. I'll still make this an audience segment. And then let's click save. And here is where we'll get the event based conversion code that we will need to add to the site. Anything event based will require additional code than just the base pixel code. Let me highlight it right here. You still need to have the main pixel added to the header of your website. So you still need to do the first step that we just did in this video. If you only do the event based code, it will not work. You need the base pixel code. If you are not using tag manager, you'll need to copy this code on the bottom. But since we are, I'm going to copy this piece of code and we're going to have to create another tag. So let's go back into Google tag manager. Let's create a new tag. This one I will name because I don't have this set up yet. Paste it in that action for tag configuration. We will want the custom HTML option. I'm going to paste that here. And then scrolling down to triggers, we already created a trigger that will track embedded YouTube views. If you want to know how to do that, you can watch the setup right here. Like I said, this is one I have not set up yet, so I will need to save it and I'll need to submit and publish the changes. Name my version and let's publish. And once again, let's go back to Outbrain, close this out. So what I could do is go back into audiences. And since I created an audience from this conversion segment, I can just wait to see if the segment size starts building. Then I know my conversion setup is correct. So what I could do is go to the website, go to the page where I know we have videos being played and let's click on play. Let that play a little bit. Let me pause it. And then we can go back into Outbrain again. And as I look in the audiences of the specific video view segment, it's not waiting for the pixel signal anymore. So I know that tracking is working. The last way to do it is to go back to your Google Tag Manager and right next to submit, you can go to preview mode. It'll ask for your website, we'll connect it. It's gonna pull your website up in a special assistant screen. So let's go down again to the embedded videos, play the same one. I only need it to run for a little bit, pause, and let's go back to Tag Assistant. And if I close this out, we will see down below the Outbrain Video Views conversion tag has definitely fired. So now I know my event-based conversion action is working. And we see also in conversions that the tracking status is not waiting for a pixel. It is active. So we do know it is working. If you want to go back up to this megaphone, which is your campaigns, you see in the orange bar up top, we don't have any active campaigns. This is just our demo account. But eventually when you do launch some campaigns, you can go to columns and then you will find a specific conversion section. From there, you can look at overall total conversions. But if we scroll down, they do create specific column options for the custom conversions that you have created. So there we see both the CS speak and the video view conversions. 
and then they would show up here. But again, we don't have any campaigns. And that's how easy it is to get the Outbrain pixel set up as well as the two types of conversion actions. The event-based actions might be a little bit more difficult, and I know I only showed you one example via Google Tag Manager, but it's fairly easy to go out and just Google other types of triggers that you can create, clicking on certain elements of the site, certain visibility selectors, all those sorts of things. If you still have questions on how to set up the pixel or specific types of conversion events, please let us know and hopefully we can send you in the right direction. Thanks for watching our video. If you found it useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week, so if you want to see more from the Paid Media Pros channel, be sure to subscribe.